Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jesse Duplantis. And I'm Kathy Duplantis. And, and together, yes, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. What a blessing <laughs> of God it is. We got a sermon that you're going to really enjoy yes. entitled The Gift That Jesus Gave to His Father. Uh-huh. You know, Jesus is a giver. Praise oh, God. That's Hallelujah. Right. And you are a gift that Jesus gave to His dad. That's you right. are Jesus' gift. So when you get born again, you're a baby Christian. And Jesus takes you upstairs and says, Father, what do you think? Do you like them? Do you like them? And Father says, wow, they look just like you, Jesus. Confused theology from a confused man. Jesse Duplantis uttered what may be the most blasphemous statement ever made by a false preacher, and we shall address it shortly. Jesse Duplantis is a well-known prosperity gospel false teacher. Using the name of the Lord so carelessly and claiming to hear from the Lord so frequently is one of the many false and heretical doctrines he promotes. So when you understand, then you'll understand the book of Isaiah chapter 9. I want to read verse 6. For unto us, Isaiah 9 verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Yet the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 1 says, Be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children. So when I look at Isaiah 9, 6, where is the government now? It's on us. The government of the world is on mankind. And because we're made in God's image and in God's likeness, you can call us wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God, Christ in us. The everlasting Father. Woo! The Prince of Peace. That's what it means to be the gift. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. But there's no word to describe just how blasphemous that was. Yes, there is nothing more blasphemous and sinful than those words. We are not entirely surprised by those statements, but Jesse Duplantis surely took his blasphemy up a notch. You ready for this? You want something that'll knock your lights off? You choose when you live, you choose when you die. So when you understand that, that's why I live here on earth like I'd be in heaven. I truly am living the Our Father prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done where? As it is where? So when you go to heaven, is there any debt? Is there any jealousy? Is there any envy? Is there any strife? Is there any age? Yeah, and there are no heretics in heaven either, Jesse Duplantis. We create videos like these to raise awareness about ungodly and unbiblical teachings by fraudulent preachers like Jesse Duplantis. It is sad to see many people sit and listen to Mr. Duplantis mock and blaspheme the Almighty God by claiming names that only Jesus Christ, God incarnate, is entitled to. We are grieved by this man's flagrant disrespect to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please join us in our fight for the truth. Please share our videos, subscribe, like, and comment. We appreciate your help. For those who think we're making a baseless accusation against Jesse, touching God's anointing, or attacking a man of God, consider how Mr. Duplantis demeaningly described Jesus' countenance when he, Jesse, encountered Jesus. And I saw a tear swell up in his eye. And he said this statement to me as we were walking. He said, now this is strange to you maybe, but not to me, because I was there. He said, the worst day of my life is yet to come. Anyone who was a student of the Bible could have walked out of the service or turned off the TV because it was clear that Jesse was lying and that he had not heard from Jesus. What's more painful and worse than the death of Jesus on the cross? The weight of the world's sins was upon Jesus as he was suspended on the cross between heaven and earth, and Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, yama sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Matthew 27, verse 46. They was talking with, all of a sudden, the Lord Jesus Christ, God, is sharing with his creation. 
He said, you know that scripture, I said that I will wipe away all tears in heaven. I said, you know, Lord, I, I never truly understood that. You know, I mean, in some ways I did, in some ways I didn't. He says, that's tears in my eyes, Jesse. He said, on that great judgment day, I will have to tell the creation that I love to depart from me. Now, he's got tears in his eyes when he's saying this now. He's swelling up in the tears in his eyes. Man, it's touching my heart. I want to reach out to him and comfort him. Jesse wanted to comfort Jesus Christ, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who promised to comfort us in our times of trials and tribulations. Jesse is out of his mind and does not have an iota of fear of God in him. What else did you see and hear in heaven, Jesse Duplantis? Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't say this at the Believer's Man. I put my hand on the Lord and I, I, I just kind of, I didn't know what, 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 you know, if somebody you love, you, you do that, you know, I mean, it's kind of, I don't know. He said, I dread that day, I dread it, I dread it. I said, you know, Lord, I thought everybody was going to be mean and boy, vicious. No, God will be tears in his eyes crying as he sends this creation whom he died for and loved. He said, Jesse, it's final. I can't change it. He said, tears flowed from my eyes the day my creation, Adam, fell. But I knew I would send myself that I had a chance to touch people. He said, but this day is coming. It's final. I can't change it once it's said. He said, I have to wipe the tears from my eyes. Let's pause and address two key points. First, the Bible says in Revelation 21, verse 4, that God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, referring to the redeemed of the Lord. Mr. Duplantis, what version of the Bible have you been reading? Second, Jesus is coming soon as a king to execute judgment. He will not mourn or weep as we once did over Jerusalem for their hardened hearts. Instead, Jesus will return a second time to reward everyone according to their deeds. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Revelation 22, verses 11 to 12. Do you recall what happened to Moses after he spent 40 days and 40 nights in the presence of the Lord at Mount Sinai? The skin of his face was radiant. Listen to what Jesse said after he returned from imaginary heaven. I said, I ain't saying nothing about this. <laughs> People think I'm crazy. No, Jesse, I don't think you're crazy at all. I just think you're a liar. But I digress. So the guy that had been picking me up every night was a talker. Well, when I, he got a quarter to seven, I cleaned up shade as quick as I could. I got in the car. He ain't said a word to me. He just looked at me. I thought, did I say something to offend him? So I didn't say nothing. Driving to the church, he just looked at me. When we got there, the service was already started. They were singing. So I walked from the back of the church up the front. As I was walking, people began to point their fingers at me. One of my tape men were there, Brother Fritz Brown. They were pointing their fingers at me. Look at Brother Justin. Then they began to look like this. I was lit up like a, I mean, like a light. I mean, I'm shining. I can't see it. I mean, I look in the mirror. I just see this Cajun face. I don't see nothing. Lit up, people going. So they start looking for, like, for television lights to see what was on my face. And when I walked to the platform, the pastor was just, he went, he just backed up. I, I was going to go sit down at the little half pew they got right there, and he just met, motioned me to come, and I just came and I said, I've been in the presence of God. And they thought I was praying. Oh, I ain't talking about praying. I'm talking physical presence. And people begin to fall out in the Spirit of God. We're grieved that this man claims to be a gospel teacher because he not only feeds his gullible followers spiritual garbage, but also unrepentantly mocks Jesus and brings untold shame and embarrassment to Christianity. I walked in my study to pray as I normally do. I have a habit of saying, hello, Jesus. And he says, hi, Jesse. It's a first name basis. I walked into that study. And something was wrong, Pastor Osteen. I sensed it. 
and he wasn't with me. Everything was going great. Everything was fine. So I began to pray like I normally prayed, and the Lord began to minister to me, and I ministered to him. Finally, I said, something's wrong. Lord, something's wrong. And it's not with me. Then I realized. And I said, Lord, somebody hurt you today? Somebody hurt you today? You're not acting like you normally act. Somebody hurt you today? The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He said, you know me, don't you? He said, my children have disobeyed me. You hurt him. His capacity to hurt is greater than yours. His capacity to love is greater than yours. I said, somebody hurt you today, Lord. I said, listen, I'm going to cancel all my appointments today. I'm shutting it down. And I'm going to praise you, and I'm going to love you, and I'm going to rejoice and honor you and call your name Hosanna. I'm going to stay here for lack of a better word, God, to say, till you feel better. And I stood in that study, and I praised God, and I shouted, and I cried, and I loved the Lord, and I said, come here, come here. Let me hug you. Come here. And I just loved you and honored him. And it was about an hour and a half, and I heard him go, thank you. You can go back to your appointments. You bless me. Unbelievable. The audacity that is required for a man to claim that he walks into his office, his study, and Jesus is there bodily. Because remember, Jesus said, come here, come here. And he, and he come here, come here, hugged him. And then he heard Jesus sigh a, a sigh of, of relief. Huh. The audacity that it would take for a man to claim that, to, to give comfort to the Alpha and Omega, the one who spoke the entire universe into existence, the one who spoke trillions of galaxies, each with hundreds of billions of stars, spoke them into existence and upholds all of that by the word of his power, that the one who did that needs comfort. That is absolutely unbelievable. Jesse Duplantis is lying to you. Folks, this man has lost it and urgently needs your prayers. We believe he made up this story or a deceptive spirit was speaking to him and he mistook it for Jesus. Watch this video if you are still not convinced that Jesse Duplantis is an arrogant and blasphemous false preacher.